Welcome to worship for the fourth weekend of Advent. Have you ever been number two or three or four or five? Have you ever been not the first one asked to do something, but after one or more said no, you became the chosen one? Hmm? Today's gospel shines the spotlight on Mary. And I would very much like to believe that the angel Gabriel made one stop to one home in Nazareth, talked to one woman named Mary, and with one presentation got her to agree to God's outrageous plan to enter the world in a saving way through a human birth, and then was on his way. I want to believe that. But I'm also willing to believe that it took Gabriel more than one attempt to get the yes that God was looking for. But whether the first or the 100th and first, Mary's yes changed everything. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And it will not surprise you to learn we have some more. Yes, thanks again, Pastor John. Um, yes, things have taken a turn out here, and I mean that literally. 
Uh, this road that runs from Nazareth on down south, it keeps going for I don't know how far. But this couple, as you remember, their names are Mary and Joseph, they have turned off that main road and are now headed west. And if I'm not mistaken, that's the little town of Bethlehem out there in the distance that you may be able to make out. I have continued to follow them from behind, as I mentioned in a previous broadcast, hoping to be able to listen in and get some clues from the bits of conversation I'm able to overhear. And in case you're wondering, they said they're okay with me doing that. They seem to be walking along uh, noticeably faster. And I'm not convinced it's because she's about to give birth, although that cannot be far off by the looks of her. No, they seem to have um, some kind of spring in their step that comes from some other source. And I have no evidence for this yet, but if I have to guess, I would say that source is hope. Which is strange given the dark times in which we are living today, our country, the whole world actually overrun by an enemy. There's disease, there's factions, there's arguments, there's fighting. It's just like the prophet said long ago, darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the people. Yet, in the midst of all this, the global struggles as well as their own personal struggles through this wilderness, I could hear her singing again. Something about, he is coming, tell the glad tidings. I don't know what the good news could be for them. They don't seem to have very much going for them right now. And I probably shouldn't mention this but I did not see a ring on that finger of hers, if you know what I mean. So what will some people say? Anyway, if the he she sings about is her own baby, well then, that is going to be a story in itself. Anyway, if it is hope that they are feeling, I have to admit it might be catching because somehow, and I cannot explain how, there is an expectation that light is coming to our darkness and that we will soon see something, dare I say, glorious. That's all for now. Back to you in the studio. We're grateful for that last report, but I can't say we understand yet where this will all end. But we certainly appreciate our intrepid reporters staying on their trail and on this story. But I've got to say, that was his most compelling report so far. He's right in that this is a dark time. A dark time of year, thanks to the change of seasons. But more than that, with everything else going on in the world, it is easy to be overwhelmed by the power of darkness. If it is possible that a new light is about to shine, then I am sure we are all ready for that to happen which gives us a good reason to pray and sing once more. We praise you, O oh God, for this wheel of time that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, open our eyes to see your presence in the lowly ones of this earth. Enlighten us with your grace, that we may sing of your advent among us in the word made flesh. Grant this to Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. <laughs> Watch for me. 
he's tried to light his own candle some other way. See now your sister, she's been robbed and lied to, still holds a candle without a flame. So carry your candle and run to the door. We are a family whose hearts are blazing, so let's raise our candles and light up the night, praying to our Father in the name of Jesus, make us a beacon. Deceived and poor, hold out your candle for all to see it. Take your candle and go light your world. Take your candle and go light your world. Take your candle. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 5. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. Word of God, word of promise, thanks be to God.
The Gospel according to Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now... Your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Where are you? Oh man, oh man, I bet that phone has been ringing since I left. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, excuse me just for a minute. I got to answer this. Gabriel here. Talk to me. Oh, hi, boss. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm, hi, Lord. Um, yep, just this very second got back. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, finally. On the fourth try, we got a yes. Um, look, uh, could I call you back? I got an office full of people here. Um, I'll call you back in a while as soon as I finish typing up my notes from my trip. Is that okay? Okay, bye. Um, thanks for waiting. That was the boss. I mean, I mean the Lord. Uh, he wanted to know how my latest trip, my latest assignment had turned out. And I have to say, without a doubt, it's the most important one I've ever received. Um, it started a long time ago when the Lord walked into my office and said, I am just fed up with the prophets. I've had it. I've had it. They're a weird bunch to begin with. People are always throwing rocks at them and all that. They garble my message, and so it's time for the next phase of the plan, Gabe, he said. I've been promising the folks a Messiah for a long time, and now it's time. And I said, Lord, <laughs> uh, Messiah will be a lot of work, you know. The political situation down there with your people, that's a mess. There are religious sects of all kinds th throwing prayers at each other. I don't know. To which the Lord said, which makes this the perfect time, get right on it. So I said, okay. I got right on it. I didn't really need a lot of instructions. The plan's been out there for a long, long time. A young woman shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. I guess I was starting to talk to myself as I was running through my list of possible candidates and I said, you know, if God is going to send a Messiah, it's going to be a completely human person. We would need a human mother. There's got to be an easier way. At that point, God broke into my thoughts and said, no, remember, I gave those humans choice and freedom a long time ago. And that means they're capable of messing up. And they often do. And they do royally. So a Messiah has to be born of a human so that it can relate to all the temptations and trials and tribulations that my people go through so that 
he'll do some in, he'll do them some good in the end. In other words, he's got to have a human mother. So I went to work, and uh, I can check my files on what happened. My first choice uh, was Princess Dorothea, and uh, <laughs> well, she was young and she was beautiful, uh, the daughter of a king. It seemed like a wonderful possibility, but I can remember her reaction. Uh, these are the notes I have to type up, but I have uh, verbatims of everything everybody said. And she said, a what? A baby? I've got a social calendar that is full from now until a year after next November. Where would I fit a baby into that? Besides, there's been more than enough scandal in the royal family already. I don't need more, she said. And I knew it was a bad choice. I knew that even before the conversation was half over. So I left there and went to find Rachel. Now, Rachel was a widow. She was unattached. She was still young, good looking, conveniently unattached. Did I mention that? And uh, <laughs> here's what she said. A year after my sainted husband dies, I should have a baby. What kind of an angel are you? She said trying to get a nice eligible widow like me in trouble. I have a nice estate left by my husband and I still have my looks. In other words, I have prospects. Why are you trying to get me in trouble with a baby? Don't you know, not every guy thinks kids are an asset in a second marriage. Right, I said as I flew off a little discouraged, but an assignment from God is an assignment from God after all. So that's when I thought about Esther. Now, her career was in full flight. From the ground up, she'd built this nice little chain of shops selling soaps and lotions and potions that pamper the body and so on. Heavenly body shops, she calls them. All of her products were earth friendly and all that. And she treated her employees very well. Um, but <laughs> I got to say, my request wasn't good news for her either. Do you know the price of daycare these days, she said, and who would run my shops while I'm an, on maternity leave? Get real, Gabriel, and get out of my shop. I can remember sitting on the edge of my cloud for quite a while while I pondered what to do next. And then my eyes fell upon Mary. Now, Mary, she's a plain one and uh, waits on tables in the local pub, which I hear is a real dive. So I said, here goes nothing, and I headed back down, and I met her with my standard issue salutations, greetings, fill in the blank, greetings, Mary, the Lord is with you. She said, I know, that kind of surprised me. I said, God has a great calling for you, Mary. God needs you to help bring the Messiah into the world. God wants you to have a baby called Emmanuel, which means God with us. She says to me, would you believe I'm still a virgin? And it hasn't been easy working in this place, she said. The manager's after me just about every single night. And that's how I know God's with me, she said. Because I couldn't have done it alone, staying safe through all this. And every night I pray, she said, God, get me out of here. So I say to her, Mary, trust the mystery. The child, wants, the child God wants you to bear will be holy, the Son of God. She was pretty stunned by this, I got to say. And then she said, am I on candid camera? I said, no, 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 this is real. I said, go home and talk to your cousin Elizabeth. She's pregnant too. And she said, what? Lizzie, pregnant? I know she wanted a baby, but she's like really, really old. Ancient, are you putting me on? I told her Elizabeth's prayers had been answered. Call her. Go see her. Then you'd know that the conversation we are having is on the up and up. And then I remembered what she said next. I had not managed to keep a conversation going this long with any candidate up till now. And suddenly she says, okay, let it be. God wants my help. God gets my help. And then she said, um, what, what's your name again? I said, Gabriel. She said, Gabriel, what am I going to tell my boyfriend, Joe? My last words to her were, Mary, trust me. 
and trust Joe and trust yourself, but most of all, trust God. It was really quite a moment when she said yes. Well, those weren't her exact words, really. Uh, I have them right here. She said, let it be with me according to your word. That's the same thing as yes. Um, it always is exciting to me when people say yes to God. Mary probably didn't realize it, but by saying yes, she was preparing for the time of her life. Christmas, that's what they'll call what we started here, um, at least in English. Christmas is full of miracles. There's nothing really so miraculous about angels. I mean, people think there is. And there will be shepherds, and there will be a manger, and there will be wise men, and gifts, and a star, and all those things. And there will be the birth of the Messiah, and that is, of course, number one on the miracle list. But, in my opinion, having worked this gig for a while, very near the top of the list of miracles is when Mary said yes. All the rest of the miracles on what you will come to call Christmas they hinge on that little three-letter word, yes. And it happens every time. Every time somebody says yes to God, doors open, direction changes, life is different. And every yes that is spoken to God prepares you for the time of your life. You'll see what I mean someday. Because, I mean, what you will call Christmas, that wasn't the end of things. It was really part of the beginning. The Messiah got to this earth because he had to die. And even that wasn't the end. He will rise again. And even his rising from the dead won't be the end for you. You will live on the other side of Easter, always looking forward to the next chapter. But to say yes to God is to say, I believe there is always a next chapter, Lord. And I would very much like to read it and to see it and to live it. I predict that Christmas will be commemorated, I'd say at least a couple thousand times every year. But I also predict that whether it's Christmas time or not, any time of the year when somebody performs the miracle of Mary, anytime someone says yes to God, it will be just like Christmas because something new will be born. And now, if you'll excuse me, there are certain poor shepherds out in a field who need a little bit of good news. Shadows put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. O come, O King of nations. 
Advent Creed. We believe in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth, the one who is full of patience, who is not afraid of silence, who does not need to fill each moment with activity and noise, the one who is beyond bluster and flurry, and who does not jostle for attention. We believe in God the Son, Savior of creation, who slipped into Bethlehem one night, mostly unnoticed, who lived 30 years without headlines or hurry, who frequently took time alone with his patient father, who waited for the right time to become the suffering servant, who stood quietly before the noise of his accusers, whose silence overpowered their words, who died then rose again on a quiet Sunday morning. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens, empowers, renews and refreshes, sometimes arriving with obvious power, sometimes with the quiet breath of a whisper. We believe in one God who patiently waits for us and who longs for us to do the same. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts, the world will receive your blessing. 
In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. God of power and might, fulfill your promise and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Gracious God, all generations call you blessed. In this holy season, we pray for our neighbors of other denominations and faiths. Inspire the faith of their people. Cultivate understanding among us and strengthen us in love and service to your community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, you scattered the proud. Everything we have belongs first to you. Help us live your blessing and protect the seas, mountains, plains, forests, skies, and soils that surround us. Give us humility as we tend to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Righteous God, you humble the powerful and lift up the lowly. We pray for the leaders of all nations that they amplify the voices of people in need. Guide all people entrusted with leadership to create societies in which everyone can flourish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, you fill the hungry with good things and send the rich away empty. Nourish those who lack access to adequate food and nutrition. Bless the work of advocates, community organizers, and food pantries. Encourage others to provide for their neighbors in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, you are faithful to the promises you made to our forebears. We give thanks for the ministry of Katharina von Bora Luther and other ancestors who organized, planned, dreamed, encouraged, and reached out as they served you. We give thanks for the bold leadership of female leaders in our own time. Inspire others with their steadfast witness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, you pour out mercy to all who cry out to you. Surround everyone in need of healing in body, mind, or spirit with your tender presence, especially those of our church family who are hospitalized, Doris Hatfield, those recovering at home, Dave Wilkins, those receiving hospice care, Don Spangler and Ann Colm, and bring your comforting presence to all who are grieving the loss of loved ones felt more powerfully at this time of year, including the families of Bob and Carol Wessling and Daryl Dixon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. It's time for some more announcements. As always, I'll remind you about the links that are above and below this video that you watched for today's virtual church service. Above is still the uh, caroling video that we prepared for you. That'll stay up there through the Christmas season. Uh, below this video are the links, as always, for the virtual fellowship that happens on Saturday at 545 and Sunday at 1045. 
A little further down are the links to the announcement page for this week, as well as the December newsletter. And a little further down is the Growing in Grace video for this week. Uh, please note, next weekend there will not be a Growing in Grace. We'll get going again after the first of the year. The schedule for the virtual church services for Christmas week uh, the Christmas Eve video will be available about noon on the 24th. Uh, you can watch it any time, of course, but I would watch it at night uh, in the evening when the lighting of the candles as we sing Silent Night will look all the more better, more better. Uh, there will not be any Zoom fellowship after Christmas Eve worship. The video for Christmas Day will post early on the 25th. Again, you can watch it anytime after the video is posted and there will not be a Zoom after that one. Uh, the video for the first weekend of Christmas will post probably about noontime like it usually does on Saturday. Uh, this is a service of lessons and carols and there will be Zoom fellowship after this one, uh, Saturday 545, Sunday 1045 as usual. All of these videos available on johnsoyster.com, of course. Don't forget to get your candle or candles to light as we sing Silent Night on the Christmas Eve service. And looking ahead to January and beyond, uh, the drive through communions will now be always on the first Sunday of the month, uh, weather permitting, uh, from noon until 2 or until everybody gets served. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-awaited Savior, fill you with love. And the unexpected Spirit, guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. Live in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.